There's been a recording of a 911 call made by a woman named Ruth Price circulating the internet for some time. The disturbing call is placed by an elderly woman who identifies herself as Ruth Price. She informs the operator that she has seen a man prowling around her property, but before the operator is able to get any more information, the caller goes quiet. Then the line is filled with sickening, horrifying screams. Several seconds later, the line goes dead. The caller was killed by the prowler who had entered the house while the call was being made. The operator could only listen on helplessly. I'm going to play the recording of the call now. Please note that this may disturb some listeners. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, Ruth Price of 3877. What's the problem, ma'am? Oh, well, there's some guy been uh, checking the place out. How? Oh. Well, he went in the back. I have an apartment in the back, and he said he was looking for a guy. And he comes to my door. And yes. And, uh... That he's uh, looking for an apartment. So I'm a, I live alone, and I'm an old lady. Mm-hmm. I'm where where is he now, ma'am? I don't have no idea. <laughs> oh. Although the recording itself is less than a minute long, it's particularly chilling to hear the absolute horror in the woman's screams. The recording has been shared widely on the internet and features frequently in collections of morbid and disturbing material. But even within these more subversive communities, the recording is considered to be particularly haunting. In response to the recording, one member of the forum, Documenting Reality, sums up the reasons why the call is considered so haunting, posting, Although the recording is short, and there are no visuals, I still find this tape particularly sad. I think it's the vulnerability of an elderly lady and the horror of some monster invading her home. But is this what actually happened? In many places where the recording is shared, one of the most frequent topics of discussion is regarding its authenticity. Is the recording a genuine 911 call which records the horrific murder of an elderly woman by a prowler? Or is it a convincing fake? Is Ruth Price even a real person? Let's take a look at the evidence. Considering the disturbing and tragic nature of the recording, there is very little information available on the internet regarding the case. This seems unusual given its infamous status, and the fact that someone was reportedly killed. Surely this would generate media attention, and we would have more information regarding who the woman was, what actually happened, and whether the perpetrator was apprehended. The lack of any official reports online about the case is the strongest argument put forward that it is a fake. However, it is possible that this incident occurred prior to the advent of the internet, and the newspaper reports are held on a microfiche somewhere. Some listeners have commented on the ineptitude of the 911 operator. She interrupts the caller when she is providing her address, she fails to ask consistent follow-up questions, and is largely silent during the screaming. The call handler is certainly in need of some additional training, but is her incompetence evidence that the recording is fake? Despite the scarcity of verifiable evidence, a bit of internet research does bring up some information which asserts that the recording is sadly genuine. One individual posts on the forum Reddit that the call is sadly genuine, and it was played for him in the early 1990s as part of a training exercise for 911 dispatchers. The call has been used as an example of how not to take a call. As a consequence of this and similar incidents, it became policy across various police departments to open emergency calls by stating, 911, what is your location? Before asking anything else, the poster notes that the recording may very well still be used for training purposes to this day. The Reddit poster states that the call was reportedly made in 1988 by an elderly woman named Ruth Price, who was killed by a prowler, and the prowler was not apprehended. This assertion that the recording is used as part of a training exercise for new emergency call handlers has been corroborated by a second source. An individual using the name HNDLC3 posted on the forum officer.com 
in June 2002, stating that the Ruth Price 911 call was played to him during a dispatcher class. He writes, I've heard this one before. This is the tape that has stuck with me these last few years. It has reminded me not to treat every call as routine. During my dispatcher class, our instructor pointed out how the dispatcher sounded disinterested in the lady's problem. Had she not cut her off from giving her address, the police may have been there sooner. I don't know if the agency had ANI, ALI or E911 when this happened, but our instructor said that it took a while to find her, obviously too late. The same poster later states that the prowler was never apprehended. This is interesting information and may well provide answers to some of the questions previously posed by the recording. The ineptitude of the call handler reflects the outdated system of how emergency calls were processed, her mistakes later being used as a cautionary tale to warn and train new staff. One other objection to the authenticity argument is that it is apparently illegal to release a 911 call to the public which records someone's death. This may well be the case, but if it is true that the call has been frequently used in training exercises, then it is possible that at some point it was secretly recorded or covertly released. The individual responsible would be unlikely to admit their role in its release. And while there are laws to prevent the release of certain documents, and the courts can seal certain pieces of evidence, on occasions these restrictions fail and things slip through and emerge on the internet. In late April 2019, images of deceased footballer Emiliano Sala lying in a morgue were shared online. Two people have since been arrested in connection with this leak. So, just because the recording should not have been released does not mean that it was not leaked. In 2017, a picture emerged on the website of the Spanish installment of the A&E cable and satellite television channel reporting to be Ruth Price, but there has been no further information about the source of this image, and reverse image searches bring up no additional result. In the recording, the caller identifies herself as Ruth Price, but in several different places online, she is referred to as Ruth Price Dugas. Is it possible that the name the caller provided to the police was not the name she was known as in official documentation? Despite this interesting lead, there's no information about a Ruth Dugas or a Ruth Price Dugas online. Once again, a potential lead goes nowhere. The website Find a Grave has a listing for a Ruth Price, born 1905, died 1988, in Shady Grove Cemetery in Polk County, Missouri, United States. Could this be the Ruth Price from the recording? The date of death certainly corresponds with that stated by the Reddit poster who heard the recording as part of a dispatcher training exercise. If the Ruth Price in the recording was born in 1905, then she would have been 79 or 80 years old when the incident happened, and she did refer to herself as an old lady. The story behind the disturbing Ruth Price 911 call is compelling and the evidence pointing towards both its authenticity and its forgery are persuasive, but ultimately, the truth is evasive. The only sources of information available regarding the call are non-verifiable, and we cannot establish their credibility or reliability. With the information available, there is no way of knowing without uncertainty whether it was genuine or not. Unfortunately, unlike a good mystery story, there are no definitive answers and no conclusions in this case. In the absence of any definitive explanation, and based on the limited information available, I will conclude by offering some observations and my judgement on the authenticity of the recording. If the Ruth Price 911 call was indeed a fake, then what would have been its purpose? Could it have been a staged role play scenario, a kind of sketch? designed to teach call operators what not to do. If so, why make the dialogue so short? There are barely 30 seconds of interaction before the intruder attacks and all communication ceases. 
This provides limited opportunities for learning points within the sketch. A longer scenario could have included many more important lessons for the trainees to observe. So was the purpose then simply to shock the trainees into realising the importance of obtaining the caller's address immediately? If so, it seems like an extreme method of training. Remember, the recording of this call has circulated the internet, become infamous, and shocked countless people with its raw, brutal horror. Does this sound like the kind of recording that would be scripted and acted as a training device? I find that difficult to imagine. After listening to the call many, many times, I am repeatedly struck by both the tone of voice and the cadence of the dialogue. It appears natural and genuine. The words used and the way they are spoken strike me as examples of natural speech rather than scripted dialogue. One particular example of what I would consider to be a natural speech pattern is when the caller says, So I went, so, so I live alone. She commences a sentence and then corrects herself, which sounds quite genuine and natural. Ultimately, the Ruth Price 911 call remains a haunting mystery that defies answers and explanations. I think the reason that this recording has had such a profound impact on some of the people who hear it is because it plays into our darkest fears. There's something particularly terrifying about the archetypal image of the Prowler, a mysterious, unknown person invading our private space. It has been called many different things and classified in many different ways. But whether you use the term hot prowl burglary, or burglary of an occupied dwelling, or home invasion. The essence of the crime is the same. An intruder has entered a private domestic dwelling with the intention of committing a violent crime against the occupants. The idea of a home invasion is so horrifying, it has spawned its own genre of horror films. With films like the 1997 psychological thriller, Funny Games, and the 2008 movie, The Strangers, cashing in on our collective fears. Was Ruth Price the victim of a brutally violent home invasion? If so, she joins the ranks of hundreds of other victims slain in their own homes. Because sometimes, home isn't a place of safety after all. Sometimes, the monsters get in too.